there's there's a place for probabilistic models in the study of language or study of anything, uh, but but it doesn't carry very far. Uh, the, the fundamental problems remain the same. So the uh, probabilistic models just tell you nothing, nothing about the creative aspect of language use, about the gap, the fundamental gap between incited and inclined and compelled. Now, there is a place for them. And in fact, there's interesting work on it. So some of the uh, most interesting work on language acquisition by Charles Yang, in this case, uh, linguist uh, psychologist at the University of Pennsylvania, uh, he, it, it's pretty clear that a child uh, approaches the problem of language acquisition by having all possible languages in its head. It doesn't know which language it's, uh, it's being exposed to. And as data comes along, that class of possible languages reduces. So certain data comes along and the mind automatically says, okay, it's not that language, it's some other language. And in fact, we find in the children's uh, in literature on child acquisition and experiments with child acquisition, it's been discovered that at various st stages, like uh, children are imitating possible languages uh, that they've never heard. So at some stage, a child, an uh, English-speaking child, can be producing sentences of the kind that appear, say, in Italian or in German, because it just doesn't know yet. It's never heard any data saying that that's the way it ought to be, but that hasn't been ruled out yet. So the child is producing things that are never, uh, never experiences in the local language, but they remain uh, still not ruled out. Now, if you work out the method of ruling out languages, you do introduce probabilistic inference. And it can lead to some interesting results, as in Yang's work. So there is nothing wrong with statistical inference, just doesn't carry it very far.